The following video contains spoilers for episode 1 of Loki. Do you believe in fate? Loki sure does. The series, not the character. Well, the character kinda does too, we'll get into it. After WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier both took very different tracks to exploring the MCU's setting and characters post-Blip, Loki, the series, takes on another facet of the world's most popular franchise and its attempts to make a home for itself in the corner Avengers Endgame admittedly painted it into. And you know, they're not doing a bad job, they're throwing up some fairy lights, they got a nice paint job, some good catering, they're working on getting some new doors installed to new interesting storytelling pathways. Eh, this metaphor is getting a bit bonkers, I'll stop. Picking up with the alternate timeline version of Loki having just staged his great escape with the Tesseract during the events of Endgame, the episode Glorious Purpose is a fascinating character study wrapped in a thoroughly entertaining bureaucratic satire nestled in an exposition dump which will likely have many MCU fans with specific interpretations of plot mechanics mad for... for a while. This show tosses what might be the biggest monkey wrench into our collective understanding of the MCU, with enough fatalism inherent to make Captain Justy Yueki Tyler jealous. And the three of you who get that reference, have a cookie. See, Loki here, intent to escape his humiliating 2012 defeat at the hands of the Avengers, gets almost instantly intercepted by the Time Variance Authority. Time Cops intent on clipping any branches that may result from timey-wimey shenanigans before they bloom into a full-on alternate universe. And our Loki is one of those branches, only saved from fatal clipping by Owen Wilson as Mobius, who would rather pick the brain of everyone's favorite dwarfism-afflicted frost giant. So yeah, if you haven't picked up on what this show's controversial central conceit is, we've got a band of seemingly all-powerful Time Cops whose mission is to ensure the MCU does not have a multiverse. So, a lot of multiverse-based interpretations of MCU and MCU-adjacent material over the years just got nuked sky-high. That includes my own, but personally I'm not that worried. The info dump explains that without the TVA's calculated external meddling, a multiverse is actually the natural order of things. And I'm sure that by the end of the series, that order will be restored, which by law of wibbly-wobbly timey-wimey, will mean we've always had a multiverse, even when we didn't. I'm worried I might be going too complicated. I gotta consider adding captions to these things in case people can't keep up. Hey, does anyone want to write my captions? I pay SAG scale. Anyway, the implications of no multiverse allowed on other Marvel media is tertiary to the point of the episode, I feel. For me, the boon of introducing the TVA is to let Glorious Purpose serve as a meditation on the nature of fate, with the MCU character for whom that conversation is most relevant. Loki, of all characters, who struggled since his first appearance in 2011 to fight the idea that his fate is fixed, that he has no control over the outcome of his own life, who has tried to attain power by imposing the idea of fate on others, has to face the idea that it is, indeed, literally true that things are predestined, and that his fate is not what he makes it. At the core of everything Loki's ever wanted to do, especially in the context of Thor and the Avengers, is proving that he dictates his own place in the universe. That he, above anyone else, holds the right to make meaningful choices. And now, he's learning that, at least from the TVA's perspective, he never really had that ability. Now, I think it's more complicated than either the TVA or Loki realizes in the context of this episode. It's not that the organization is in his or any other character's heads, dictating directly what choices they make. Rather, we're told that the TVA observe an infinite amount of potential choices, decide which ones they deem correct, and eliminate all others. It's a pretty complex take on the enforced destiny idea, all things considered, but an enforced destiny nonetheless. In retrospect, it makes placing him at the center of a time travel narrative that challenges his self-determination the most natural decision ever as premise for a Loki TV show. I fully expect that by the end of the series, Loki will thoroughly reject the TVA and the idea of determinism that they represent, and pull a 180 from his initial philosophy by creating a universe where people are truly free. Beyond even that though, this series is going almost full meta with itself immediately through that concept of fate. Because the thing is, it doesn't matter if you or I believe in fate. Fate exists for Loki because Loki is a fictional character. And as Mobius points out for him that his purpose is not to rule, but to be the villain who hurts people so others can ascend to greatness, it's almost like he's pulling back the curtain, revealing to Loki his own nature as a trope, purpose-built to fit a narrative. 
The sequence where Loki watches the rest of his own time in the MCU takes this even further, basically being the moment Loki chooses to watch his own fictional narrative to its conclusion, and by extension is now both fictional character and viewer proxy to his own complete fictional story. It's a real interesting position to put him in, as I gotta imagine this new knowledge and changed self-perception will lead Loki to make a lot of unexpected choices going forward. Throwing it back to Mobius, I immediately love this guy, and Owen Wilson was pitch-perfect casting as a direct foil to Loki's psychology. Wilson is really, really good at playing characters who are hardly flappable. Blunt, casual characters who don't anger easily, who let things bounce off them most of the time, and even when they are genuinely upset, react in really understated ways. And that's great, because it's exactly the personality type to cut through Loki's self-important, self-deluded BS. Most of all, he's got nothing for Loki to parry back with. No ego of his own, no insecurities, no exploits. Combine that with his use of the Time Twister, and it's no wonder that Loki is ground down to the core in a matter of minutes, when for the first time ever, he has to just sit and take it from someone. I love the interrogation scene between Loki and Mobius. Having someone pull Loki away from his own narrative to sit him down and ask what he actually wants for himself, and point out the hypocrisies in his philosophy, that's the kind of brain picking this character naturally begs for. I love, love, love that we have Mobius point out how Loki was in a way responsible for his mother's death in Thor The Dark World. This episode takes advantage of that prime emotional real estate which previously went hardly capitalized on. Between this and Endgame, the MCU experiment is really proving its worth by taking the most widely dismissed movie in the franchise and building effective, impactful pathos on its foundation. Naturally, another small point of note is Casey. Guy's a hoot, and another personality type that it's fun to see Loki be bemused by. More importantly, though, is the contents of his desk drawer. Nothing quite says that we're expanding the scope of the MCU beyond the Infinity Saga, like establishing that the TVA uses the Infinity Stones as paperweights. It's just a really brilliant execution, something that bolsters the episode by making the audience really relate firsthand to Loki's understanding of the universe he inhabits being totally shattered. It's the one illusion broken by this episode which the character and the viewer can be said to have a near-equal investment in and understanding of. Overall, Glorious Purpose is a great foot forward, easily the best first episode of the three shows so far, tight and economic while also being measured and contemplative. I expect the show going forward will be way heavier on the shenanigans, and with a foundation this solid, I more than look forward to it. But what do you think? How do you feel about the episode and some of its potentially controversial choices? Are you excited or do you feel cheated? Sound off in the comments, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the future.